I will make you a great nation and bless you. You will be famous and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Genesis chapter 12, verse two and three. Good morning, everyone. Um, some of you have seen me before or you met me or you see me on videos or for some of you, this is the very first time you're getting to meet me. So please allow me to introduce myself, share a little bit of my story, and talk about something I'm very passionate about, which is compassion and justice. I was born and raised in a small town called Piracicaba in Sao Paulo State, Brazil. And just like Pastor John talked about, I too was born in a church pew. My family, it's very Christian, and we are a family of church planters and pastors and missionaries, Sunday school teachers, youth leaders, whatever role in a church you can possibly think of, I can guarantee someone in my family already played that role. And I always had a heart for the so-called mission ministry, which is the community outreach piece that makes a church complete, that completes a church call for the world. And my church back home, we had amazing projects for missions. Uh, we used to do local mission trips to towns nearby, and we would spend the day there doing social projects, distributing food, talking about Christ and the Bible. And we have other efforts in our church as well. And I would always sign up for all of them because for me, it was always very clear that the Church of Christ, the capital C Church, has a crucial responsibility when it comes to the community they're at, to not only love, but also to provide and to take care of their neighbors. Well, back in middle school, I started having a couple of questions concerning what exactly is the role of the church? What is the responsibility of the church outside its walls? Because inside, in my church back home, the, the needs were being met, right? The families were happy. Prayers were answered. We were doing a lot for, for our people. But what about the ones that were outside our walls? What about the people who didn't come through the front doors? Uh, whether because they, they didn't feel like they belonged or because they were trapped in social injustice situations. How can we go to them? How can we serve them? And what is the best way to do this? Those questions were back in my mind all the way to high school. And I never really got an answer. Most of the times where I would voice those questions, I would hear some, oh, Anna. And if you have a questioning personality like I do, you know exactly how frustrating that is, right? When you're trying to do something and you never really, you, you don't feel like people are actually hearing what you have to say. So I graduated in high school and I went to college to study social science. And it was very interesting. It was an interesting decision because I don't know how it is in here, but in Brazil, that there is a very weird dynamic between social sciences and Christianity. So when I decided to do this major, to get this major, I felt very strong in my heart that that is what God was calling me to. But I've heard multiple times from people in my church that I would give up on my faith because sociology doesn't really mix with the Bible. Or I would hear people from college saying that I should just give up on the major because Christians don't get science. And well, spoiler alert, I didn't give up on either. I am a sociologist and I am a Christian. And because I always felt like that's exactly where the Holy Spirit was guiding me to. That was what I had to study at that time. The more I studied about mankind, historical process and vicious cycles and political structures and community dynamics, the more interesting the Bible became to me. And I started to realize that studying the Bible makes much more sense than just reading through it, right? And now I knew how to do it. I knew how to study the Bible. I knew I needed context. I knew I needed extra resources and I needed community and I needed discussion. And all of that was just 
making me so anxious and, and excited to study the Bible more. Well, of course, I had my days of doubts, uh, especially reading through Genesis. Genesis can be a very confusing book to study. And, and on those days, I was praying like, I'm not sure I get this, or is, is this really what it is supposed to be? But those questions, those doubts and concerns, they only motivated me to study more. All they did was to fed my curiosity. And as we're talking about, your curiosity is your velocity, right? So I decided to just go deep and study more and engage with the Bible more over and over throughout the years. And by doing that, all those questions came back full force. Outside is walls. Does the church have a responsibility to all people? Should the church join or even lead efforts of social justice in its community? And if yes, why are we not doing it? Why are most of the church's social projects focusing on short-term relief, like band-aids, instead of long-term empowerment to guide families to independence? And are we targeting the roots of systemic injustice are we going to the people to serve them or are we making them come to us to beg for assistance? Are we hurting the people we are trying to help? Well, one day when I was still in college, I was home for vacations and I went to church and I went to Sunday school because that's what you do. And after a very tough Sunday school time with a lot of tough discussions and intense conversations with my teacher, I voiced some of those questions and some of those concerns. And I challenged the ways that we were doing things. And I heard back from him that maybe I should, I should rethink if I'm actually a Christian because some of those questions don't really belong in the church and there is no place for someone like me in that church. Last sermon series, we talked about the temperaments and its colors, and I am a big yellow. Like, I am so extroverted and I'm people-oriented, and as a yellow, as a sanguine, I need approval. I need approval and acceptance. Those are the two things that motivate me to be a better person, and these, these are the two things that make me feel safe and comfortable in my environment. And to hear from someone in the leadership of the place I call home for my whole life, that I didn't have a space there, that I didn't belong in that community, that was really hurtful. That, that left a massive hole in my heart. And so I, I left. I left church that morning. And when I was on my way back to college, I remember praying very heartbroken to God that I wasn't giving up on him or his spirit, but I was giving up on the church. I was like, I'm done. I'm done, God. It's, it's too hurtful to be around there. And I just, I just want to be with you and, and, and by myself. And I spent around three years without a church community. And let me tell you, it wasn't fun. It was not fun to study the Bible without having anyone to talk about or to go through very tough moments of my life without my, my faith family to embrace me and pray with me. It was very lonely. And anyhow, fast forward a little bit and I graduated in college and decided to live abroad. So I was looking for some exchange programs and I found one that's called Au Pair in here in, in the United States and I signed up for it. I got matched with an amazing host family in the smallest but prettiest county of the United States, which is Arlington, Virginia. And my host family used to live just down Glebe Road and Columbia Pike, walking distance from Thomas Jefferson Middle School, where Grace congregates in the mornings. And I walked to Grace one day thinking, I'm not sure about this. I don't, I don't, I don't want to find a church, but maybe this church is going to be fine because, you know, church for people who don't go to church. That's me, I think, I guess. So I just walked to Grace and I got here. Pastor John was preaching uh, a sermon series on relationships, which I must confess, 
did not pay much of attention to it because I was single with no intentions of changing that status. But I kept coming and I would just sit in the back row, not talk to anyone with the exception of our greeters because they are amazing and you can't come and not say good morning to them. But I would just leave without talking to anyone until one Sunday I came to Grace and Pastor Derek was preaching a sermon on a movie called Priceless. The whole sermon was on raising awareness to the issue of sexual trafficking in our world and the social responsibility of the church to join the fight to end that injustice. And I kid you not, I started crying my eyes out the moment that sermon ended because in 24 years of church life, I have never, ever seen a pastor talking about social justice from stage and challenging the congregation to take very strong steps towards action to end it, to end a social injustice in such a straightforward manner. Well, that day I left church and I called my mom in tears and I told her, I think I found the church I belong. I, I think I found my place in this country. And the very next Sunday, I signed up for everything that was available for me to sign up. I started serving at Grace Kids. I met a couple of young professionals and I signed up for a small group. I joined the newcomers lunch. Everything that Grace was saying, hey, we need people. I was like, I'm in. This is, I want to be part of this community. And eventually, because of changes of schedule with my host family and a lot of other changes too, I found myself volunteering at Grace Office. And I was working very closely to our former mission pastor, Michaela Simrall. And Michaela taught me so much. And it was amazing. It was an incredible opportunity for me to firsthand witness what God was doing through Grace and how Grace was working to be relevant to our community. All those questions, concerns, and struggles in my journey really made it clear to me that the church really does have a social and a spiritual role in whatever community we find ourselves at. In the Bible, it's very clear about that too. From the first passages of the Old Testament, like the call of Abraham that we read earlier, God is literally telling Abraham, I will bless you so you can bless others. And the others, it's not just the ones that are inside our walls or inside our congregation. God says to Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. And then you go to prophets like Isaiah talking about seeking justice, taking care of the fatherless, pleading to the widow's cause. Then you go to the Gospels when Jesus is telling us, love your neighbors as yourself. Then Paul's letters and then James and then Revelation. From Genesis to Revelation, benevolence and community care, it's placed in the center of a Christian life. And the local church should aim to be relevant to all of those around it. But but to be a church that is relevant to its community, we need three things, three very important things. The first one is the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, 15, 17 says, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. But this Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. To me, the Holy Spirit is the most fascinating person in the Bible. Every single time the Holy Spirit is mentioned in a scripture, something mind-blowing happens. Do some research for yourself. Google mentions of the Holy Spirit and see it. Every time it is mentioned, something incredible happens. It was the Holy Spirit was the power on earth before creation. It was the confidence and the strength to Abraham to follow God's call. 
It was the wisdom to King David to unite Israel. It was the power that raised Christ from the death. And it is the wisdom and the gift and talents that men and women throughout scripture use in order to do good in their communities, to, to attend to their neighbors. That it's all the Holy Spirit work and we need him. We need the Holy Spirit power and his guidance because as second Corinthians says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The second thing we need in order to be a church that it's relevant to its community is the experts. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4 to 11 says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There you go again, Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, for the good of a community. To one, it was given the Spirit of message of wisdom. To another, message of knowledge. To another, faith. To another, gifts of healing. To the other, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. Distinguishing between spirits to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues or interpretation of the tongues. But in all of these are at work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. We need people who are investing their life, their time, their money, their efforts to changing the reality of our world and taking care of our community. And that's why Grace Community Church fosters partnerships local and globally with counties, organizations, schools, in order for us to help our community, to love our neighbors in a way that it's not hurting them. Because sometimes we might have amazing ideas. We want to feed everyone or we want to provide rent assistance for everyone, but without the experts, we might end up doing something that it's hurtful instead of something that it's helpful. And we don't want to do that. So that's why we have our partners and that's why we pray daily for them, for them to be equipped by the same Holy Spirit to use their talents to help us and lead us as a church in how to love our community better and how to be relevant with everyone that is around us. And the third thing that we need, the last but not least, is you. We need you. Romans chapter 12 says, For by the grace given me, I said to every one of you, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love, and honor one another above yourselves. Never lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Different people have different backgrounds, have different perspectives, have different stories, and they serve in many different ways. That's what makes a body so incredible. Every member has a different function, but it, everyone is working towards the same goal. And we need you to make this happen. A body, it's only complete and functional if everyone is working in sync towards one goal. So if we are to be a church that is famous for love, like we love to say we are, it has to start from here. It has to start with loving one another, being devoted to one another, honoring one another, respecting our questions, respecting our differences, and working towards providing for our community. With these three things, we have been able to accomplish so much already. 
With the partnership with Justice and Mercy International, we are a support system for orphans and forgotten people in Brazil. With Feed My Starving Children, we are packing and delivering over 200,000 meals a year to children across the globe. With Compassion, we are in sponsoring and building relationships with children and youth in Guatemala. With International Justice Mission, we are rescuing and restoring people from slavery. With Pink Door, we are empowering and protecting women exiting sexual exploitation. With Carpenter's Shelter, Bridges to Independence and Path Forward, we are providing food, shelter, and career opportunities to families at risk of or experiencing homelessness. With Rock Recovery, we are providing a safe space for recovery of people struggling with eating disorders. With AFAC, we are distributing free quality food for families around our county. With Project Belong, we are caring and wrapping ourselves around families that are taking care of vulnerable children. With More to Life, we are reaching out and protecting survivors of domestic sexual trafficking. With Little Lights and Casa Chirilagua, we are empowering the youth and raising community leaders. With Safe Harbor Counseling, we are helping people understand them better and finding the ways to live a better life. With other churches and with the counties that we work with, we are able to help families avoid homelessness, provide food for their kids, and provide school supplies materials for their children as they go back to school. All of this is already happening because we are using those three things. We talk about this all the time. Grace Community Church only does three things, Christ, community, and compassion. Compassion is part of our call. It's part of who we are. It's our identity as a church, and we are not stopping. I listed a couple of examples of things that we are already doing, but we want to not just continue those, but to do more. We want to keep providing for our community. We want to keep being relevant because God called us to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. And I'll say this one last thing before I end my message today. You belong here. Whatever was said to you before today, whatever made you feel like you didn't fit in or that you didn't have a space in the church, I want you to know that you are an incredible addition to this church, that you are unconditionally loved by the creator of the universe and that to me, it is an honor to be able to share this space and my story with you this morning. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we just wanna thank you for the incredible opportunity to serve with Grace Community Church and to be part of a church that is so relevant to our community, a church that understands your call and the social responsibility that comes with being your followers. What an amazing opportunity we have here, God, to not only serve the church, but to serve our community because you love us, because you bless us so we can be blessing to others. Please pour out your Holy Spirit on us, God, so we can be equipped and ready to serve using our gifts and talents in a way that it's going to be amazing for our community and for our partners and for every single person that comes in touch with our church. We love you and we thank you for the honor of being in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.